duhuza ibiganza byacu twakira umukozi w'Imana Pastor William ndetse no musemuzi we Imana ibaho mugisha Amen Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for tonight. You are a very good God. We worship you because you are worthy of our worship. We exalt you tonight because you are the one who deserves all the glory. Even as we share your message, I pray that you speak to our hearts change our environment we pray that you visit our hearts and then discover those things that we have uh, kept there for a long time Heavenly Father there is no one that can save us the Bible says the chastisement for our peace was upon you Jesus and by your stripes we are healed Father I speak special healing over your people those with broken hearts those that are sick physically I pray that you meet them right now at their desire from the sole of their feet I speak healing over their bodies I rebuke malaria in the name of Jesus I rebuke malaria in the name of Jesus every sickness and disease has a name and there is a name that is above every other name and this is the name that we have to worship it is the name of Jesus Christ at the sound of your name demons tremble so, so now we rebuke every demonic oppression that may be inflicting your people we rebuke them in the name of Jesus. We speak healing over their bodies. We speak favor over their lives. Father, we thank you because you sent forth your word and your word heals them all. I give you all the glory. I worship you tonight. You are worthy of our worship. You are worthy of our praise. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus mighty name. Give a shout of praise. Can you brighten the lights, please? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Today is on Friday. It's a great evening. It's a great day the Lord has made. The Bible says we should always rejoice. Because waking up from your bed and you find another day, it's a miracle. Because I have seen millionaires die prematurely which means money cannot save your life it is only God who protects your life so every time your heart is pumping it is another privilege for you to rejoice and to be grateful to the Savior Hallelujah. Hallelujah we've been talking about forgiveness for the entire month and we are now in the month of June on Sunday we are going to conclude our teaching series we actually concluded it on Sunday but because of public requests 
we added another week which is Sunday. And something special about Sunday. You are going to ask questions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the, when you ask questions, you are not going to ask me alone. If Pastor Joshua will be here, he will answer some of the questions. Pastor Rose will answer some questions. Pastor John will be here to answer some questions. And then I also answer some questions. So Sunday is going to be a different service. Every question you have deep inside of your heart that is about forgiveness, whatever we did not answer in the whole month, feel free to come ready to ask that question. But if you can ask those questions before by writing them on a piece of paper, that would be much better. So that on Sunday we start with your questions. And please understand we are not, we don't have answers to your questions. Pastors are here to guide you in your journey of righteousness. The one who has your answer is the Lord of Lords and the king of kings. Come on, give a shout of praise to Jesus. He's worthy of our praise. Today I have a very exciting message under the title, The Joy of Forgiveness. The Joy of Forgiveness. Psalm 32 verse 1. Zaburi. 32 verse 1. We are going to read verse 1 up to verse number 5. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Verse 2. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. And verse number three, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. Let's stay slightly on that verse number three. Verse number three. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through the groaning all day long. Every time you keep a heart that is full of anger, a heart that is full of unforgiveness, it adds much burden to your life. But it also affects your body. It also affects your bones. So forgiveness is a medicine that heals you personally. It may not necessarily be a medicine that will heal other people, but it is a medicine to you. Every time you let go of all those baggages in your heart, even your bones will grow stronger. And verse number four. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Amen. 
ubuzima bwanjye bukayonga nk'ubiswe n'icyonzwe cyo cyo muki verse number 5 then i i acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity i said i'll confess my transgressions to the lord and you forgive the guilty of my sin nibwo rero nkwirezeho icyaha cyanjye sinazi sinazi nzika mafuti yanjye naravuze ni ngiye kubwira uhoraho ibicumuro byanjye maze nawe untura umutwaro w'ibyaha byanjye ladies and gentlemen forgiveness bene data kubabarira is a choice not a feeling forgiveness is a choice not a feeling when you forgive your heart is set free i have said this over and over again but forgiveness is a decision you make ariko kubabarira ni cyemezo ufata not driven by emotions but a decision you make driven by your desire to be free ahubwo kubabarira ni cyemezo ufata cyoboye nuko ushaka kugira umudendezo hallelujah hallelujah when you are building a house yet kubaka ginzu there is a, this old man i trusted to be the taker the taker of uh, our construction project ari umusaza niringiye ko ari bumfashe mu buryo bwo kubaka so whenever i would give him money to pay porters he could pay them half and keep another half i could see the house was not going up quickly and then one of the of the porters told me that this old man is also building a house so whenever i would give him money to pay porters working on my house he would pay them half and then he pay another half to his porters building his house it happened the first month the second month the fourth month the fifth month i have no crew bibukwezi kwambere kwa kabiri kwa gatatu no kwa gatano nta gitekerezo nari mbifite hibyo and then somebody a whistle blower told me what was happening umuntu umwe aza kunyongorera mbwira ibigimbere and then i decided to make an announced visit to his home in the middle of the morning anza gufata ikemezo cyo kugira ngo nsure ha handi kuri rwa rugo rwe mu gitondo but before making that decision mbere yuko mfata cyo cemezo this old man I had helped him in many areas. There's a time when they evicted him from his house because he didn't have money to pay and I paid for him 4 months of rent. And then his wife was also part of an association and she had paid to pay some money I paid for her. So this while I'm doing good works for this old man to the contrary he's taking my money So one particular morning I decided to go there with a porter just very early in the morning at 5 we went to his house and announced and then when we arrived at his house i don't know how he saw us he jumped through the window and ran away my heart desire was to meet him and punch him mm, pastors can also punch but by then I was not even a pastor. Even now I don't know if I'm a pastor, but you know, by then I was not a preacher. So I missed the opportunity to punch him in his house. My heart was boiling with anger. 
Because he had taken away a lot of money from me. And the money we were using to build the house was not from us who had brought money from the bank. Can you imagine you borrow money from the bank to build a house and somebody is taking half of the money? So one day he, he, he disappeared. I could not see him. I don't know what happened to him. But for me, I was searching for him. Now there is a car I used to drive. I used to work for World Vision, so he knew the car I drive. So probably he would see my car and he would run away. So one particular day, I will never forget. I was driving another car which he doesn't know. I met him near our village. He didn't realize it was me. Then I stopped. I said, how are you, Muzei? When he saw me, he ran away. I turned the car. I drove behind him. I stopped next to him. And there was a police officer next there. I said, help me catch this thief. He caught him, put him in the car. I drove him to our house. And I locked the gate. And Pastor Rose was there. She didn't know what to expect. I was very angry. I told this man, this is your last day. Talk to your wife. It is your last day. I got a big stick. This is your last day. I saw the man sweating and the sweat was flowing like water. Then I said, call your wife because this is your last day. He could not even compose the number of his wife. Lord and behold, I told him, I'm going to give you the best punishment you'll never forget. Then I said, I have forgiven you. Go! In a few seconds, I don't know he disappeared. And that's the day when my heart became stable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I forgave him. I was very angry. But my heart rejoiced the day I said, I forgive you. Pastors, when he was, she was there all the time seeing what was happening. She was also very scared because she had never seen me angry like that. But when I forgave the guy, my life came back to my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So forgiveness is a medicine to you. Particularly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Forgiveness is a medicine for your life. King David, in Psalm 32, you have heard of the message, what he was saying. But if you go to Psalm 51, you see King David repenting. Remember David had an affair with Bathsheba. And for a long time his heart was being haunted. And then in Psalm 51 we see David apologizing. 
And after apologizing, God forgave him. With all the troubles David caused in his life and the lives of other people, God forgave him. Matter of fact, he said, I have never seen a person with a pure heart like David. God said, David has a heart that is similar to mine. So ladies and gentlemen, when you don't forgive, your heart is pretty much the same like the heart of the devil. Yes, because your heart is always boiling with the anger. Your heart is always boiling with the revenge. And all the time, as the minute is tickling, your heart is tickling with anger. Whatever you do in life, you will never be successful. So the reason why we started this teaching series on forgiveness, it's because you deserve a better life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You deserve a better life. When you forgive, life comes back to your life. So before you carry rage in your heart, just always remember who you are. Remember yourself. Tell yourself you don't deserve that. You don't deserve to be angry from morning to evening, day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, up to Sunday. Don't be angry from January to December because they hurt you. I think you deserve better life. Hallelujah. We all deserve better life. Because when you have not made a step to forgive, even whatever you touch will never prosper. Matter of fact, you are not different from pagans. Because pagans do evil things. And forgiving heart is a devil heart. But the reason why sometimes we don't let go it's because we want the evil doer to suffer. They wronged you. They messed up your life. You were supposed to be a better person, but because of them, they messed up with your life. You lost your job because of them. You lost your family because of them. You lost many opportunities because of them. Those people who have done evil things in your life deserve punishment according to your heart desire. And so every time you lack on them, every time you think about them, you wish something weird may happen to them. And you are waiting day after day. You are waiting for an opportunity. And your ears are always open. Waiting for breaking news. But there is no breaking news coming to you. And so another month you are thinking the same. So that's why sometimes we don't want to let go and forgive. But when we stay like that, we are killing ourselves slowly. Yes, you are killing yourself slowly. Whatever you touch will never prosper. Even when you get a girlfriend, she will disappear from you because she cannot tolerate your anger. You are always comparing him to people who offended you. 
Even when you go to university or to primary school, whatever they teach you, you don't capture it in your head. Because even teachers are criminals before you. In other words, those people that offend us, we, we picture other people to be like them. And this is what happens. Our heart separates from something called trust. Umutima wacu witandukanya n'ikintu kitwa ikizere kwizera abantu. We don't trust ourselves. Ntabwo twizera. We don't trust our family members. Ntabwo twizera abanyamuryango bacu. They even don't trust the pastors. They even forget to they 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 don't trust the pastors. Abo bantu gasanga nti banizera n'abashumba. So when your heart is wounded, iyo umutima wakomerekejwe. You trust nobody. Nta muntu numwe wizera. Do you know some family members who don't go to church because they were offended in one church? I can't go back to church. They wronged me. Those pastors, they wronged me. So let me stay home. Even if I go to hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So an forgiving heart will make you a prisoner even in your home. So my sister, my brother, you deserve better life. Just think about those people that have offended you for a long time. And then when you look up to them, also look at yourself. Remember when you let them go. It is you who is setting your life free. And the day you become free. The Bible says. The Holy Spirit will live permanently in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And forgiveness. Will kick away the Holy Spirit who is supposed to live in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand on our feet. Forgiveness is a medicine that is going to treat you. It is a medicine that helps you personally. Some of us have been Applying for different jobs, we can't get those jobs. Because we are not okay in the inner man. Whatever you try to do will never prosper. Every time your heart is calling some people. Last Sunday I told you that you are not a carrier of people. You are supposed to be carrying the Holy Ghost in your heart. Stop carrying people. Offload those baggages by making a simple but yet important step in your life of forgiving them. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and life abundantly. You cannot have abundant life when your heart is heavy. Some of us are carrying heavy loaden in our hearts. And it's not something that started yesterday. It is something that we've been carrying for a long time. There are those people that upset you and it was very hard for you to even forget about them. But most importantly, it is very hard for you to let go. But listen, every time you allow the Holy Spirit to use you and soften your heart, those people that have wounded you, they never 
did that because they love themselves. They also hate themselves. So it is you to help yourself. Heavenly Father, tonight is a night of restoration. It's a night for us to reflect on who we are. Father, we invite your understanding to speak to our hearts. Your people here are anxiously and willingly ready to change their lives. Even though it's been hard for them to forgive, Father, I pray that you give them the ability tonight to think beyond them and then see who God created them for. Let me tell you this. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a child of God. You are a precious child of God. If you are the only person living on the face of the earth, still Jesus would have died for you. Jesus said, he can rather abandon 99 sheep to look for just one missing sheep. You are very special that you deserve much better life. Your projects are waiting for you to be implemented by you. You cannot do that when your heart is heavy. It could be your mother that offended you. It could be a family member. A sister, a brother. A closest relative, a friend, a family. Your spouse. Or your husband. Could it be your employer? I want to encourage you. Look beyond self. Go deeper into your heart. And discover how special you are. You deserve a better life. You deserve compassion. There are those boundaries that you have set. It's like you've put yourself in a cage. Because you don't make any step to the front, you can't even go backwards, you are in a cage. And forgiveness will put you in a cage. Even when you pray, your prayer cannot go beyond that cage you have put yourself in. You deserve better life. Let's lift our hands. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you came to redeem ourselves from the pit and to restore our lives. I pray tonight that you may speak to someone who is willing and ready to change because your people deserve better life. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your people and I know there is no message that comes from you that will leave us the same. Heavenly Father, touch my sister. Touch my brother. You are God, Jehovah. We know you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all those things we ask for or wonder. Father, hear their prayers. Hear their prayers to the glory of God. As I invite Pastor to come forward, I pray that God may meet you at your point of need. See beyond the limitations the devil has set before you. 
Love yourself. Love yourself. Love yourself. Love yourself. Love yourself. Because you cannot love your neighbor. When you hate yourself. Father, I thank you. Because your joy will be filled in our hearts. But most importantly, I pray that you may speak to our hearts and change us for your glory. In Jesus' name. Pastor. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uchiranirwa. Amen. Umutima we nubemo uburiganya. Nagira ngo mvugane n'umuntu uraha cyangwa se umuntu ufite gushaka gutanga imbabazi bikanga, ugashaka kubikora bikanga, ushaka ko dusenga n'uvuga kuti pastor nsenye iryo senge